gotta go. We gotta get out there. The clams don't move and aren't going anywhere. <laughs> clams wait for nobody. <laughs> the clams are wait for everyone because they're stuck in the mud. You do not have to wake up early to go clamming. You don't have to get up at 7.30 in the morning on your vacation to go clamming. Harris, you have to get up too. What? I'm gonna make, I'm making you a coffee. Oh, thanks. Come on down. Are you, are you dressed? Where are you going? Where are you going? I'm running away from that camera, I'll tell you that. So we would go clamming a lot of times like when we got home from the beach, because it's like everyone was kind of like hot and sandy and then already wearing the bathing suits. And so we jump in the pond and clam and then we cook them for dinner. I bought this house in 2008. I was almost out of college. So I didn't start coming to the Cape until I was like a pseudo adult. <laughs> and we didn't start clamming right away because it's like, I'm from St. Louis. It's like, what is clamming? But we quickly caught on mostly because we all wanted to eat clams. And I grew up eating clam chowder from a can and like always loved it. But then to make your own, it's just like 10 times better. All right, here's grab the things. Mm. Really, it was my older sister, Emily, who like took it upon herself to be like the family clam expert. We just had this great spot of this saltwater pond that leads out to the ocean, so it's tidal. It's all like ocean water. And cohogs are easy, because they don't move. Okay, it's pretty warm. When we first like moved here, we went to like the local fishing place. I'm not in the water yet. <laughs> We were like, what do we need to go clamming? And we got the bucket and we got the rake and everything. And then <laughs> we got in the pond and started doing it. And we were like, not good. We didn't get any clams. So Emily was really the one who was like, I'm doing my own thing. And we, I don't, I'm sure other people do this. I don't know. We just kind of made it up. We just feel around with our feet in the super soft, like it's like a silky, silty mud. Okay. What's wrong, Claire? It's just, it's just really early to go swimming and the water is not cold actually. Oh God, I'm hitting the mud. Oh God. Oh God. Oh God. What is your technique right now? <laughs> float. <laughs> my technique is float. You just feel around for like the smooth shell and then my method, some people dive and pick them up with their hands. My method is to scoop them up with my feet. <laughs> and then put them in the bucket. They're mostly buried, but the shells, the two halves of the shells are like this, and it comes to the ridge. And it's usually just like the ridge that's poking out. So if you feel something symmetrical with a ridge, it's probably a clam. I don't feel like the method matters as long as what you end up with is a bucket of clams. I got one. Good one, big one. This is a quahog. See how big it is? So it's really a chowder clam, which is what we're gonna make. <laughs> it's off. Usually, if it's deeper and you drop one, it's just gone. Go. Okay, got one. Oh no, I didn't get one. <laughs> it really sounds like a big insect. On my own, I probably just got like 15 to 20 in not such a long time. This is a little piece where if the clam fits through this window, it's too small and you throw it back. I mean, it's obvious if they're big, but like I got one kind of smallish one. Let's see if I can find it. Maybe this guy, but it doesn't fit through. So keep it. And now I'm gonna go back out and try to fill up the bucket. Uh-oh, this came off. How'd that happen? Harris, are you sure you don't wanna get in? Yeah. yeah, what happened was Harris sat on the chair and 10 minutes later walked back in the house. And I got all the, <laughs> I got all the clams until Vinny and Calgon decided to get in. <laughs> but Harris is just like a little bit squeamish and he doesn't like the mutt. And he didn't want to help. <laughs> Look at Harris. <laughs> Harris is out. I don't know why he didn't bring his coffee. He could sit there and drink it. If you're interested in clamming, you have to like make sure that it's permitted. So we have a shellfishing license, but it's easy to do yourself. 
look at how beautiful. Usually we cook them outdoors because they take a lot of like volume because they're big and the shells are big. So we open them on the grill, which is what we're gonna do. Quahogs are not really like eating clams. They're like chowder clams, clams you wanna chop up and cook, and cook with. So, and then we like strain the liquid, save the liquid, that's kind of like your clam broth. And then you can do like a million different things with them. Clam pizza, of course linguine clams which you can check out the full episode on my Patreon. I remember my dad making this dish and we grew up in St. Louis, so it's not like we were getting like, you know, like clams in the Mississippi, but I used canned clams. And I remember age five or whatever it was, thinking to myself like, there's just no way that there's a better smell on earth than this smell. And I still think that. This is one of, look, Harris fell out of the car. One of Harris's lotto tickets. <laughs> I don't think you won. They're not so dirty but I just like to give them a scrub. Harris always yelling at me that I don't clean our herbs well enough. These are some very big cohugs. The grill is preheated. I'm gonna sort the clams. I have these, we use these a lot, these like reusable but disposable aluminum pans. So I'm gonna sort them. It doesn't really matter that much into three sizes, just because they're gonna cook at different times. And again, I'm really just going for opening them, not really cooking them through, because they'll cook again. So I'm gonna do small, medium, large. This is a small-ish, I would say medium. Mostly gonna be mediums, I think. And it's okay if they're kind of on top of each other. Obviously that's small, because I'm gonna kind of move them around as they cook. These guys are large. The sizing is just so that like there's not a little clam that's being covered up by a bigger clam and then I can't tell if it opens. I'm gonna get them on the grill and then I am going to close the lid and let them steam and that's it. And I'm gonna take them off. I'm gonna be able to fit all these. Close enough. <laughs> Ow, hold on. <laughs> I'll make it fit. Is running. That'll be fine. All right. So this can take a while. I'm going to give it like at least 10 minutes before I start checking. And then I have a bowl for, I'm actually just going to pull the meat out and then this will be for the liquid. I'm going to grab the bucket. I'll put the empty shells in the bucket. As much as I love the beach, I don't love the sun and it doesn't love me either. I'm the person at the beach. I have like sunglasses and a big hat and a towel around me and a sun shirt and I'm under an umbrella. What's the SPF? At least 50. I don't do it under 50. I should have my hat on. I'm gonna look at my hat. <laughs> I'll be right back. So let's see what are open. Well, none. Give them a little toss. There's some liquid in there, so they're starting to release. All right, more time. False alarm. Any open? Oh, no. yeah, yeah. Yeah? yeah. Some are opening. All right, I'm gonna turn these. That guy's open. I'm gonna turn this guy's open. They're I'm gonna open. turn this that up. one's open. That's, That's what we're, great. Those popped open, so now we're kind of now we're kind of, things are moving. See how the joint is totally open. I pluck out, look at the size of that clam too. I pluck out the meat. Ow. Where are my tongs? Oh I'm using my tongs. I need, I need second tongs. Alright, well this is gonna go over here for now. And then take out the meat. So these are kind of not even quite cooked. They're still kind of translucent. So they're still kind of raw, which is good. The shell is just gonna go back in here. Are you gonna open any more? No. Okay, I'm gonna put this back down. And so that meat is the brain, right? Count. <laughs> I don't know what it is. <laughs> it's a bunch of stuff. It's everything. It's a muscle. So it's like a tongue and that's a clam. Sure. It's a whole bunch of stuff. Oh my God, we got a big one opening. How exciting. Oh my God, it's happening. Who mostly does the clam cooking? Me or my sister or my dad. My mom and my other sister Jane aren't much of clam eaters. They don't actually really partake in a lot of the clam eating. I think it is opening. Am I imagining that? <gasps> it's like the ugliest flower. <laughs> if they don't open, that means they're dead. So I'm just gonna call it, probably toss them. But in the meantime, I'm gonna get this liquid off of here. I'll strain this when I get inside, but I'm just gonna tip it into the measuring cup. There's some sand in there, which I will not pour in. Mm. 
I'm gonna turn the grill off, close it down. I got all the meat, I'm gonna go inside, chop them up, strain the liquid, and then make some clam chowder. The most of the work is done, really. That was the hard part. Cal, do you wanna carefully grab that liquid? It's just super hot. Okay, thank you. I guess what I like about it, besides just that we like eating clams and they're delicious, is that it's foraging. It's like using what's abundant and local. So it's just fun to like go out there and pick your own food and make something with it. So that's what we're gonna do. Here, let me put this down. You can put it right on top of here. Just I think this is not heat proof. Excellent, thank you. To me, clam chowder, it kind of does what french fries does. You can eat a salad, which is great. I like, often I'm like, I crave salad. But it's like I kind of want that like little rich thing on the side. And a cup of clam chowder is perfect for that. I was thinking about this. I feel like clam chowder, not only is it delicious and I like to eat it, and not only is it kind of in the category of my favorite things to cook, which are like, you know, big kind of stew, soup things in one big pot that kind of bubbles away, but it's also kind of the one of the best uses for clams because it makes use both of the clams and of the clam liquid. And there's so much flavor in the clam liquid. So this is a dish that's really about the flavor, not even as much about like the pure volume of clams. Of course it's there for like great texture, but this is all about clam flavor. So I have, this is the clam liquid from all the clams that I opened. This is meat from around half. So I have some of this liquid draining through a coffee filter just to remove any fine particles. That's gonna be the main kind of liquid component of the soup, aside from my heavy cream, obviously, because it's New England style clam chowder. I have some bacon that I cut up. Harris started cooking it this morning for breakfast and I yelled from upstairs, I was like, you better take that bacon out of the pan because I need that for the soup. <laughs> so it's like, not quite raw. Then I have some aromatics. I'm gonna throw in some celery, some fennel, some leek, which is so good in clam chowder. I have a yellow onion. And then of course potato, that's like the starch component of the soup. Then of course my clams, clam liquid, a little white wine because I like the acidity that it adds. It's not really a typical thing that you'd add, but I'm gonna add it. And then flour, which is my thickener. Oh, by the way, I forgot to say, I'm gonna make some oyster crackers because there has to be some kind of baking involved. It can't be that hard. The oyster cracker, I'm just gonna make like the most basic like lean cracker. So flour, a little bit of sugar, a little bit of butter, and like milk, water maybe? I don't know, we'll see. I'm gonna use like a Fanny Farmer base recipe. It's sort of like classic New England cookbook. First steps, I'm going to get my bacon rendering and my butter in the pan. So I have like a, a Dutch oven here. My parents are very proud to point out that this is a piece of cookware from their original like set that they got for their wedding. So I'm gonna turn this heat on. So I'm gonna get my bacon going over low to start to render it out. And then while that's just kind of hanging out, I'm gonna chop up all of my aromatics. This was four big thick cut strips of bacon, which is probably more like six ounces. And I kind of want to use four. I could have told Harris just that he could have cooked one of the pieces. So that's starting to sizzle. I'm gonna keep an eye on it. I'm gonna keep it on low. And while that's starting to render, I'll chop everything else. So celery is definitely a must in clam chowder. However, celery I think is a very strong flavor and I don't want to overdo it. I think for some people, the tedious part of cooking is all the chopping. I kind of love the chopping. Celery is the best ingredient for practicing knife skills because it has, it lies flat. A leek kind of rolls around, but celery, it's easy. You can, if you're gonna make a lot of soup, buy a pack of celery. Okay, so the leeks need to be washed. Leeks have a lot of dirt in that place on the leek where the light green parts meet the dark green parts, where they start to separate. So I'm just gonna rinse these, see how they're dirty. Do you know what one of Harris's signature moves is? Uh, the split. <laughs> no, one of his signature cooking moves is he leaves bacon on the stove and then leaves the house. It's not my favorite of his habits. So I'm splitting the leeks in half lengthwise and then in half again. They're just kind of easy to work through. And I don't need to chop any of this very finely because 
it's gonna all kind of sweat out and cook down. And now I'm gonna cut up this fennel. I might not use the whole thing, but we'll see. So fennel is a delicious vegetable that pairs very well with seafood. I might just use a half a bulb. I don't want it to be too strong. I think one of my favorite ways to eat fennel is to just thinly shave it into salad. It's very good raw. And here I'm gonna cook it. And then I'm gonna do some onion. So you can see we're using a lot of alliums. People are gonna freak out about this, but I'm very under control here with this knife. This is quite a large onion, so I might not use all of it. So I can smell the bacon. It is starting to render out. I'm gonna give it a little stir. I do kind of radial cuts, like toward the center from every, you know, kind of like quarter inch interval. You just follow the lines. I kind of just follow the lines, exactly. And even though it makes the cuts slightly less even, as in the ones closer to the core are gonna be smaller, the variation's not that big, and I'm making soup, so who cares? I just feel like it's easier, and the onion stays together better when you cut it. And then once I get down toward the core, I'll cut it flat. So I'm probably gonna do the other half of the onion, but I wanna get these in the pot because I feel like the bacon is smelling pretty done. So now I'm gonna add I have four tablespoons of butter. I am going to add flour, which is gonna thicken the soup so I don't have a, you know, so I have that classic kind of like creamy clam chowder consistency. The flour is gonna bind with the fat and make a roux, and then I can add my liquid. So the fat's really important. So I'm gonna supplement the bacon with some butter. The bacon looks, it's just kind of at the stage where I want it to be, which is starting to crisp around the edges and mostly rendered, but like not fully crisp. So now I'm gonna grab this whole cutting board and add all my aromatics. I'm probably gonna lose at least 50% in volume, so it looks like a lot, which it is. It's about to start smelling so good. So I just wanna get all of this coated in the butter and bacon fat. I'm gonna turn up the heat a little bit, more like medium. I had it on kind of medium low. And I'm just gonna let all of this sweat, so to speak. So I'm also gonna chop the rest of that onion and add that. Now, when it comes to seasoning the soup, I'm basically not gonna add any salt because the brine from the clams is super salty. And when I was cooking them, there was some evaporation on the grill. So like it's even more concentrated and saltier. And I'm gonna let that do all the seasoning. I really don't need to add any additional salt. I'll definitely add some pepper toward the end. Would have been a good video idea to hmm. do knife skills vegetable soup. That is a good idea. No carrots in this, by the way. I don't feel like this needs carrots. Let me just make sure all this is cooking down. There's a lot of veg. I'm gonna turn it up a little bit. I have all my aromatics in. This is gonna cook down for like probably at least 15 minutes. I want the veg to lose some volume and I want it to cook off a lot of the water. So I'm just, have it, I'm just gonna keep it on medium here and I'll stir it occasionally. And in the meantime, I'm going to chop up my clams. I pretty much have everything else prepped, um, but I'm also gonna turn to my, oh, I can do the potato. And I'm also gonna turn to making a little quick cracker dough to make oyster crackers which you have to have in clam chowder. I changed out the filter because that one was going very, oh God, very slow. And I just want, I don't want any particles in there. No sand, no little bits of whatever. So now I'm gonna chop the clams. I have about half of the total clams that we found this morning in the pond. So this is about half of them. This is the full amount of liquid though, and I'm not sure how much I'm gonna use. So now I just wanna chop these up because quahog's clams are quite large. And that's not, you don't wanna bite into a whole one. They're pretty chewy. So I'm just gonna chop them up. Make sure you use a sharp knife. Keep those fingers out of the way. Do you wanna do the anatomy now? I couldn't tell you what any of the parts are. It's a clam. And I don't like to think too hard about it. I know that it tastes really good and I'm fine with that. You can make this with canned clams and they make like bottled clam juice. You'll probably get really good flavor either way. All right, this is looking really good. You can see that they've lost some volume. The vegetables are, this is gonna keep going now. This is a lot of clams. This is gonna make such a delicious clam chowder. So now I'm gonna peel and dice my potato and get that cooking as well. Fill this up with water and get that boiling. I am using flour as the thickener for this soup. There's other thickeners that you could use. Potato is actually a great soup thickener, but I don't really, I like the kind of silkiness that you get from a flour thickened soup or stew. And I don't really want the potato starch in there. 
So I'm gonna cook the potatoes separately and then you also have more control over the cooking and how done it is. And I feel like sometimes when you cook potato in soup, in the liquid, even when it's fully cooked, it maintains a kind of a texture that I don't, I don't like as much as when it's just cooked separately. I'm using one rusted potato. You could use whatever kind of potato you like, Yukon Gold, you can use like little red potatoes. I don't know, whatever, whatever you want. Just give this a stir. So I wanna cut these into like bite-sized pieces. How do I wanna do it? And then as soon as I cut them, I'm gonna put them into the water because I don't want them to oxidize and turn brown. Okay, so I'm just gonna let this hang out over on the stove. I don't need to turn it on. Harris also, not only did he use my bacon this morning, he used my potato, but one should be enough. Okay, so now I think we're at the point where I'm gonna add my flour to this mixture. I am starting to get a little bit of sticking on the bottom, meaning the vegetables have lost a lot of their water content and I'm gonna, it's gonna go from like steaming in the pot to starting to brown. Now, this is not a precise amount. I'm gonna start with like probably two tablespoons. So you can see this bubbling fat there. I want all of that to kind of get bound into the flour. So I'm gonna give it a stir. I can already tell you that I need more. So I'm gonna add a little bit more, probably at least another tablespoon or so. You can see it's starting to get a little film on the bottom, which is good. So I, I wanna really cook that flour out. I might add a little bit more, maybe one more tablespoon. So all in, I probably added between a quarter and a third of a cup. And this is gonna be my thickener. So I'm kind of making a roux, which is a mixture of fat and flour, but it's, I'm also making it with the presence of the bacon and all the aromatics. So I just wanna cook this out. What happens if you don't add enough flour proportionate to the amount of fat is you'll get like little droplets of fat in your soup. And it's not a bad thing. It's just you're not gonna have that like classic, really smooth texture that you associate with New England clam chowder. Okay, so I'm definitely stirring constantly at this point because that flour will start to brown. You don't want it to burn on the bottom of the pot. Now I have my wine. I didn't measure this. This is probably about a third of a cup. You don't have to add this, but I like it as a deglazing tool. And also it's gonna add a little bit of acidity, which I think is appropriate. It's a lot of like rich flavors with the bacon and the cream. So it helps to cut through that a little bit. So I'm getting a little bit of a browned layer on the bottom, which is good. That's gonna be flavor and it means that I'm cooking out the flour. So you're gonna go in. And this is basically gonna totally evaporate and cook out, but what it's gonna do is start to dissolve that layer of kind of brown flour on the bottom. I definitely don't want like a raw alcohol taste, so I'm gonna let this pretty much cook out. For the people at home that are anti-cooking with alcohol, is there something else you'd recommend? Yeah, I mean, you can just totally omit this. You don't have to use this at all. You can just go straight into the next step, which is gonna be to add my clam liquid. You could add just like the teeniest splash of like an apple cider vinegar or something like that, if you know, to get that acidity, but it's not necessary. So I'm gonna grab my clam liquid, which is still straining. It's like, do I need another new filter? I might. It really did catch a lot of silt. Look at all that sand and silt. So I wanna keep going with this, but I'll start with this amount. We had some evaporation with, when we were cooking the clams. So I really do think that there is a non-negligible risk of over-salting this just by adding the clam liquid. So I'm gonna start with, that was probably two cups. And I might just have to add a little bit of water, which is totally fine. I feel like water is a really underrated cooking ingredient. And people think, oh, you have to add stock because stock is flavor and there's not enough flavor in water. But it just doesn't really always work that way. So what I'm doing now is just stirring this through and kind of scraping out the bottom to dissolve the flour that's on there. But this definitely needs more liquid. Let's, let's find some cheesecloth. Ah! A lot easier than I thought it was going to be. <laughs> My mom, look, I, if anyone wondering where I learned how to keep an organized kitchen, it was definitely from my mom. So I turned that way down just while I do this part. So because the coffee filters were effective but very slow, I have a double layer of cheesecloth set in a fine mesh sieve. And let's try this much faster. Hopefully, 
nearly as effective. Okay, so that's probably another two cups. I'm gonna actually taste what I have because I wanna be really conscious of the salt. Anything with clams, I over salt because I just want, I want so much clam flavor, I add so much liquid. Also, the bacon has salt, by the way. It's really salty. <laughs> I'm gonna add a little water, maybe a little more clam liquid. But, call that cup and a half of water. Call it three cups of clam liquid total. So now I'm just gonna let this kind of cook for a little bit. I'm gonna turn my potato on. I'm not gonna salt my potato. So I'm gonna get that cooking. This is nearly done. I'm gonna let this kind of come up to a simmer, reduce a little bit. We'll add the clams, add the potato, we'll add the cream. I keep forgetting about the crackers. <laughs> I'm gonna put together the cracker dough. The great thing about crackers, there's no leavening, no yeast, no waiting. I'm just gonna make them. And also they're oyster crackers, so it's like, they're just here for the crunch. I'm not too technical here. So I'm not, I do not have an oyster cracker recipe, nor do I take the time to develop one. I'm going to use a recipe from Fanny Farmer, author of the Fanny Farmer cookbook, which is like a very old, very classic New England cookbook. And it's like an all-purpose cookbook. There's a million recipes, and there's a recipe for just white crackers. I'm gonna start with a cup of flour, which in my book is about 135 grams, give or take. About a teaspoon of sugar. So I'm gonna grab sugar. This I'm gonna eyeball, call that a teaspoon. Then about a teaspoon of salt. Not very precise, so there's a teaspoon. Then I'm gonna grab butter, I just need a tablespoon. Pardon me, I'll go into the fridge. So there's a little bit of fat in this recipe and the fat is going to kind of tenderize them. So I'm just gonna cut this up into some pieces. Throw that in. I'm gonna basically just work all of this fat into the flour mixture, but unlike pie dough or biscuits or anything flaky, I wanna basically just like work it completely into the flour. So I'm using like a rubbing motion. Really trying to break up the butter into small pieces. All right, so the soup is kind of bubbling at a very gentle pace, which I like. Just keeping an eye on everything behind me. So the butter is totally worked in, no big pieces. I'm gonna grab a measuring cup. I could do this by sight, but I, just for the sake of having measurements so that I can share, I'll grab a measuring cup. But basically I wanna add enough milk to kind of bind everything together and make a soft, but not super sticky dough. So I'm gonna measure out a third of a cup, but add just shy of that. So I'll leave some in the measuring cup. This is whole milk, pour that in. Left about a teaspoon or two in there. And I really like mixing dough with a fork. Harris has a, <laughs> we have a Danish dough whisk which my mom gave to me that used to be hers. I truly never use it, but I just like it because it's like kind of cute looking. Harris hates it. It's his least favorite thing in our whole kitchen because it's like very big and gets in the way a lot, but I really like it. So I'm gonna go ahead and add the rest of the milk. Just a little bit of dry flour still. All right, that seemed to do it. Third of a cup seemed like the magic amount. Everything is come together, no dry flowery spots. I'm gonna get this out onto my work surface. I have this kind of, actually feels like a nice hydration, like soft, but not terribly sticky dough. I mostly cleaned out the bowl. So I'm gonna just knead it very, very lightly to even out the texture a little bit on just the barest amount of flour. I don't wanna overwork it because I want them to be tender. So now I'm gonna roll this out on my work surface. I'm gonna grab my rolling pin. I have my grandma's old rolling pin here. So I'm gonna give it a little bit of flour. All right, that's done. I'm gonna turn off the water. Let me give this a little stir. Probably turn this down a little bit. Okay. That's my oven, just preheated. And I think I want this pretty thin. It wouldn't be bad if this had sort of a square shape. That would probably help me the most for cutting, but it's sort of difficult to make it take the shape you want it to. So I'm probably at about an eighth of an inch thick, which feels good to me. I am gonna get this on a baking sheet. I'll throw a little parchment under it, and then I'm gonna cut it. I'm gonna try to cut it into hexagons. I hope it works. I have to cut in three directions to make six sides. So first you cut in strips, horizontally. Do you think I should sprinkle them with a little Old Bay? Yeah. They're gonna be really salty though because Old Bay is so salty. Now I go this way, parallel, and then I go this way, parallel. <laughs> Cal looks very skeptical. Cal, you don't think it's gonna work? I think it's gonna be triangle. Did I do this wrong? I think so. I think they're <laughs> gonna be really nice triangles. No, but this way they're gonna be parallelograms. 
And then the other way. They're going to be nice no matter what. The little triangles. <laughs> no. For every hexagon, you get two triangles. Yes, you're right. So we're going to have a mixture of hexagons and triangles. Does anyone care? No. Nope. OK. No, it sounds cool. OK. <laughs> In my head, it made hexagons. Am I doing this right? I think this is right. I'm really feeling less prepared than normal. Well, it kind of worked. And my plan is the following. Bake them enough that they're set and starting to get dry. And then I'm going to separate them on the baking sheet. Make sure that they're not touching, get better air circulation around them, and then continue baking them until they're like nice and barely golden brown, I would say. I'll check them in like less than 10 minutes. And in the meantime, I think I can kind of go ahead and finish my soup, oh, which is bubbling. So I'm going to add my clams for the amount of soup. This is a good, a, a generous, but like appropriate amount of clams at the same time. Okay, and now I can also go ahead and drain my potatoes and go ahead and add those. And go potatoes. There's going to be more liquid added because I'm going to add the cream, probably around a cup or a cup and a half. But to me, this feels like you get, it's like a nice hearty consistency. So you get a little bit of veg and potato and clam in every bite. So it's not just, you know, it's not overly brothy. So I'm going to add the cream, which is like an essential ingredient here. It's just not clam chowder without the cream. So I have heavy cream. Generally with a creamy soup, you don't want to boil it really hard after the cream is added because there's always a chance that it could break where basically your cream kind of separates. So I'm just not really going to like boil it more once I add this. To help sort of like reduce the chance of breaking, it's good to add it at room temp. And you can even temper it. Like you can spoon a little bit of hot soup into your cream and then add it. But I think it should be fine. I'm going to start by adding about a cup. It doesn't actually take that much cream to make like a really rich creamy soup. So that cup of cream looks like it did it. I'm pretty happy with that. I just I want to give it a taste because I'm still a little bit concerned about salt. I think that the texture of this is great. Like that's the right amount of flour to the right amount of liquid. I wouldn't want it to be thicker, but I wouldn't want it to be thinner either. Mmm. It's salty. I mean, not like, not, not in a bad way. Such good flavor. The bacon is really pulls its weight. Like it adds a subtle smokiness that goes so well with clams in particular, but just kind of seafood in general. Really complex. I think that that little bit of wine gives you just like a, a slight hint of acidity, which helps to cut through everything. I'm going to turn this off. It's basically done. Oh, that'll do it. I think that's enough. I think like to dilute it, probably just add another half cup of liquid and we're probably good. Don't add any more salt. I'm not gonna add any more, but it's good. Okay, the crackers are looking good. I'm gonna separate them because they're just kind of shy of the point where they're gonna get color. There's just a little bit of browning around those edges. I'll kind of pull them apart. Should I pull out the triangles now? Yeah, it's gonna be picture perfect. Well, I want the triangles to cook too. I'll pull them out later. Before they're fully done, I just want them to be separated so that they all dry at the same rate. Otherwise, the edges would get so crisp and the center ones would stay kind of soft. So, I mostly separated them. I'll kind of do a final pass when I separate all the triangles out. And now these are just going to go back in the oven and I'm going to cook them until they're like fully dried all the way through and a little bit golden. Okay, I can sort of smell that the oyster crackers are done. Oh, they got a little brown. Oh no. <laughs> well, the hexagons look great. <laughs> the triangles, maybe I got a little overdone. Mom, this oven is powerful. All right. <laughs> Most of them look great. Triangles, not as much. Okay. They don't sound as puffy and airy. Well, they have to dry. They have to cool. That makes them puff? No. To make them puff. Do they put baking soda in them? I don't know. <laughs> Probably they have some leavening. Some of they puffed a little. So what you're telling me is that these, these are, are a good. total failure. Okay, Cal likes them. It's like one of those flavors. Yeah. It's like that deeply satisfying, boring flavor. Yeah, it's like super bland. Yeah. It's just white flour is the flavor. It's good. Good job, Claire. He nailed it. <laughs> <laughs> it's supposed to be just like, it's just pure texture to eat with the soup. Ow, these were so hot. I'm really just burning my hands. All right, so these need to cool. I'm gonna finish separating them. But then we're gonna 
make ourselves a bowl. We're gonna try it, I'll probably chop a little parsley, maybe grab a squeeze of lemon, but we're basically done. A little lemon on top, lemon and seafood, then a little bit of parsley, and some of my oyster crackers, which didn't puff that much, whatever. Okay, I think this is a great consistency. It's super smooth and like silky. I don't have any like fat droplets on top, so I know I have the right proportion of fat and flour and liquid. And I got my oyster crackers. I'm gonna taste it. I definitely wanna get some clam in there. Mmm. Mmm. I love the texture of the clam. I especially love it against the kind of like soft, creamy potato. Mmm. I think there's too much bacon. <laughs> I know we can do less bacon next time. Sorry, Harris. I <laughs> kind of yelled at him. But it's really yummy. So delish. So we have this like series of really fun episodes from Cape Cod. We're definitely going to continue to mix it up a little bit, get out of the kitchen, expand a little bit. Of course, we'll always bring you dessert recipes that you can share. But it's just fun to like be on the road a little bit and in a new kitchen, especially where my mom can help me with all the dishes that I have to do after the episode. So thank you so much for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe. Patreon? Patreon. And Patreon. Sign up for Patreon. Original recipes several times a month. Linguine Drink clams. water. Linguine clams. Drink water. Why do I look dehydrated? No, it's just other life advice. Cut!